Hello humans, Master Dinnerflex here, bringing you the low quality content you deserve, and today I'll be going over a very, very early theory of Lair of Darkness post Battle of Chaos. Now, you have saw me meme this deck, you saw me try it a few times, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty fun, and then I walk away from it. But about like a maybe like four or five days ago, I decided, you know, I'm going to trim that list, that meme list down to like the 40s, like cut a lot of the fat out, kind of take a more serious approach to this deck. And uh, this is what I came up with. And for those of you who like Lair of Darkness, and those of you who know how I play this deck and how often I play this deck, li listen to me right here. This is literally the best version of Lair of Darkness I have ever played, and it's not even close. So, why is that? Why is this build just so superior to any other version I've played before? Well, the truth is, it's because it plays to the strengths of the deck and reduces its weaknesses. So, Lair of Darkness has always had this issue of it's really good against stun decks, and it's really good at preventing a combo board, but it doesn't have any form of resilience, and it's very dependent on Lair of Darkness. Go figure. But Alice managed to fix both of those problems. So, now it's no longer as fragile as it used to be, because now all your extender, like Alice is a major extender, and if you throw ties in, it means whatever happens doesn't matter. Um, in addition, this allows you to make some pretty aggressive extra deck plays. It allows you to have a tribute fodder that's actually good, because like I said, if you have Lilith and Alice, you actually have three tributes with the lair never being in existence. So that's really good. But all of this to say, like, you can play a lot more aggressively, which is what the deck really, really needed. Because it was very good at dealing with a lot of the board, but it had no true follow-up once you broke the board, which means your opponent, even if you broke everything, they were going to crawl back in the game. And this is, like, a card that really prevents that from happening. And it's also with a lot of extra deck options, too. But let's get into it. We got the Ladies of Lament. Triple Lilith, of course. Triple Alice. One of, literally, the best support card past the structure deck we've ever gotten. It's not even close. Um, all the others, like, Malice is okay. It created the infinite trap loop, and I still play it in this list. But uh, it definitely didn't... It just added more of what the deck already had, which um, isn't what it needed, because it was still struggling. But now you have an infinite grind game with Malice, but now, uh, you can actually put that grind game to use with Alice. So, Alice, if you don't know what it does, when it's normal summon, it targets any Lady of Lament in your graveyard and can summon it. That can include another copy of itself. You can special summon it from your hand by banishing any trap from your hand or graveyard, which is nice. And then when it's destroyed by your opponent or it is tributed... You search any fiend with whose combined stats equals 2,000 from your deck to your hand, except Alice. And that's in the main deck, Lilith and Malice. Um, very, very, very good effect. This card is absolutely exceptional. The funny thing is, I was thinking about this uh, because DPYGO said this. Um, it's really weird that Alice doesn't search itself. Because this card is actually just two cards. It's an extender, and it's a power recovery play. Because it's either Wolf Bark on Normal Summon, or it's a Special Summon to let you play through Disruption. But that's like two very, very wildly different effects. So it's kind of weird that Alice just doesn't search herself. But it is what it is. Um, so that's it for the Ladies of Lent, and you know what Malice does. It creates the Infinite Trap Loop. Sure, it's Double Tribute, but it's another copy of Lilith, so it's always going to be important, um, even if reluctantly. And then Triple Tour Guide and Skarm is another way to get to a rank 3 engine. It's also another way to put level 3 Dark Fiends on board, which is important for ties. And then we got Triple Arima and Triple Heavenly Prison. And that's it for the monsters. So, um, 
once I get done with this deck list, I'm literally going to have multiple, multiple interactions with this deck I want to show off. But Sky Prison is very nice. Um, it, it actually does a little more than you might think it does. So for the spells, Lair of Darkness, obvious. Prosperity, definitely, definitely play this over Extravagance. Because as you can see, this is a real extra deck. So you actually need to play Prosperity. Um, triple Ties, it's an extender. It, if something really bad happens to like a tour guide or something, you can just ties it and get some monsters out and it doesn't matter. Also a Consistency Booster. And then one Terraforming. And yes, I am playing the Ghost Trick Package. So one Ghost Trick Shot. So this is why the extra deck is actually so good. Yes, it is five extra deck slots. But this card, I mean, like, that package is absolutely insane. Not even that it summons F0, but because it's so powerful, your opponent has to burn interactions on it over something that's pretty much pointless um, in the grand scheme of this deck. But if they don't, you get an F0 and a recurring body every turn. And that's usually just game, a deck filled with trap cards and control interactions like Lilla Flare. Like, actual insane package, and I'll show that interaction soon. Then for the traps, we got Infinite Impermanence, one of the best cards to draw with Alice going second. You just turn off one of their Negati monsters, banish it from your graveyard, special Alice, run it into something to let it die. You search Lilith in the damage step so they can't ash it, you activate Lair, normal Lilith, get rid of something. Like, this is literally, like, <laughs> Imperm, Alice Lair will break so many boards. It's hilarious. Um, and then triple back to the front. I Originally, I was thinking, you know, we could probably play, cut this down to two. Um, because Alice can let you grab back Lilith anyway. But then I realized, you know, if I'm in turn three, I would have just win the duel. So I started just putting back the front back in. This card's always going to be great because um, unless you're playing a stun version, which I've already established before, stun is literally the wrong way to play this deck. This deck doesn't function as a stun deck. Um, you, once you hit turn three, you want to do everything. You want to make sure your opponent knows they lost. And then triple DDG, which is actually getting far worse this format because the actual best deck, I think, is Trilirilus. And then, like, Sword Soul behind. And then D-Barrier is better against both of those decks. But the truth is, everything not those decks, D-Ground is just so powerful against. So it's weird. It's like the best two decks, this is bad against. But literally everything else, this can win the duel automatically. Except D-Barrier can win against the best decks automatically. But against everything else, is a very underwhelming. So it's kind of a hard call. Um... But we'll see. Uh, so you could easily switch these two. Or you could go back to the artifacts. It's just, I'm not a big fan of artifacts when you have uh, Heavenly Prison. Because it locks the Scythe in place. And I'm not a big fan of that. Then we got Double Dogmatic of Punishment. There's only one main deck. There's only one extra deck target for it. Because you really shouldn't need that many uses of this card. And Double Ice Dragon's Prison. Uh, it's not important that it does its Trishla interaction, which is very good, but it's more important that it takes a monster out of your opponent's graveyard, which can lead to a lot of OTKs or extra deck plays. And then one Metaverse. It's just another Terraforming. And, and if you were to cut, like, Terraforming and Metaverse, get this down to 40, you actually lose consistency on Lair of Darkness because you're directly cutting two search cards for Lair to make it 40 cards to try to see Lair more. That doesn't make any sense. So I just kept it at 42. Then the side deck, the searchable kaiju for this deck, Rayon. It's the one this one can search, and it's a fiend, so it's nice. Uh, and then one token collector. Why only one? Don't you want to see this? Uh, this card is searchable in this deck with Alice because its grand total stats are exactly 2,000. So um, you can just search this. And not only is it like an FTK against Sword Soul, but you can actually use it on your own layer of darkness summoning tokens so you can end on an easier like push for games so this card's actually very nice in here regardless of uh sword soul or not and we got triple evenly matched uh it's a trap that goes exceptional with alice because um you just like special alice 
run it into something, get your search on the damage step, and at the end of the battle phase, evenly matched, and then uh, it, it's all down there, hill for them there. Then D barrier, of, I, I've explained this before. Two duster because it's a trap back row removal, so Lilith can search it and you don't get stuck behind mine or Imperial Order. And two breakthrough skill, which is funny. This is specifically for Zeus. So if you're getting ready to get Zeus, um, they have turn player priority. So like, how, how do I explain this? So if you're getting Zeus, this is a trap you want to have. Because if you imperm them, they'll just re-chain the Zeus and you lose everything. But if you chain this and they re-Zeus and do everything, uh, they usually have a zero-use Zeus. But if they don't, like, let's say you just set it this turn with Lilith. Like, you attributed something random um, for Lilith and you set this and they go for Zeus. Next turn, they're going to have a live Zeus. So you just banish the breakthrough skill uh, during your turn and the Zeus isn't online anymore. And you can just play normally. So that's what's really important about this card. And it's also just another going first option. And the uh, degen button. You don't really want to play skill drain in this deck. But I, I Imperial Order, my bad. But skill drain works just fine and is uh, really broken in this deck. Then for the extra deck. For the Ghost Trick package, we got the two Angels of Mischief and Alucard. Um, these put two rank four non-number XEs, which is F-Zero, which is Drake of Future. And then Alucard will keep cycling back the Ghost Trick shot over and over and over again. Leviera, I've yet to summon. Um, I, it might get cut. There are actually a few cards in here I might just cut, because the only time they're ever being used is specifically to get banished off Prosperity. I never actually use them. Um, Break Sword I do use. Downer, not really. Um, Zeus I use all the time. This is important. Unless I decide to side out the Punishment, then this is always a Prosperity target. Uh, beat cop important it doesn't come up very often anymore because um usually you have better links to go into but sometimes it does come up so it's important to have same with board blocker except this comes up a little more because you always want to protect layer and if you've burned through too many of them going second you can just recycle one in the end phase dark the dark charmer is uh broken actually insane the best link in this extra deck and then we got Cooler Nightmare Unicorn. This is uh, what you'll do sometimes with Dark. You'll just take something out of the graveyard, use its effect if you can, and then you'll link them into Nightmare Unicorn and spin something in. Sometimes you can climb into Access Code if you decide not to banish it, but I have not used this card in a very long time in this extra deck. This is probably one of them that's actually cuttable. I just don't use it. But now that we got the deck list ready, I want to show some interactions. All right, so the first interaction I'm going to show off is like tour guide. This is basically how you access the ghost trick engine. So you will normal summon tour guide and special summon Skarn. Now, obviously, depending on your hand, you might actually summon a different target because if you have Lair and back to the front, you'll actually summon a Lady of Lament instead because then you can Lair Lilith your opponent. But uh, let's just say we only have tour guide in this set card I'll show off soon. We will overlay them into Alucard. And to Mischief, we will detach Alucard specifically for Mischief, and we will add Ghost Trick Shot, activate it, revive Alucard, and then overlay for another Mischief. And we will have to detach everything here to overlay them both into F0. Alucard will trigger to add back Ghost Trick Shot. And then we can go Draco Future. And then during the end phase, we'll get a Skarm Search, which is almost always Lilith, outside of a handful of exceptions. Now, this is what you do with the Ghost Trick Engine. But let's go back and say Tour Guide didn't resolve. They either Valored it, or they Ashed it, or they Impermed it. They, they interacted with Tour Guide. Tour Guide saw a hand trap. Okay, well... This is what's really funny, because the only hand trap that's, that even really has an effect against Lair Darkness is Ash. And that's only if your hands are really bad. But, um, like, Effect Veiler Imperm has never affected this deck. Uh, I've gotten Dark Ruler to Forbidden Droplet, uh, Chalice, and Lair multiple times while I had Lair Lilith. And they the look on my opponent's face when they realize, oh wait, Lilith can still trade my stuff. 
really proves that effect negation is nearly unplayable against this deck. So um, let's prove that a bit more. So if Dirt Guide gets negated, you'll just activate Ties on it and you'll summon Lilith and Alice. And then you can tribute Alice to set a game winning trap like DDG, and then Alice will search another Lilith. So, like, as you can see, like, there's plenty of ways to just play through normal disruption. And you could even take it a step further, because what if Tour Guide gets negated, and instead of having ties, you have Alice in a trap? Um, so we will... Go ahead and banish that trap from our hand. And now we can just go into the ghost trick package that way. Like, as you can see, there's just plenty of ways to just ignore whatever your opponent's trying to do. But this also applies to going second. Because Lair of Darkness, people misunderstand. Lair of Darkness is actually one of the best trap decks at going second there has ever been. Because the traps you're playing don't have to be spe specific. Like trap holes, they don't have to be Eldritch stuff. Um, the traps are just any normal traps, and that can include Dogmatica Punishment, uh, D Barrier, Ice Dragons, Imperm, Torrential, like, the traps you can play are going to be chainable, and they're actually going to interact with your opponent's board without them having to do anything, like, anything from, like, Compulse to whatever. So, like, the traps it's playing are already better at going second. But Lair of Darkness inherently is a board clearing card. So even if, like, they're responding to your cards, if you get a, Lil a Lair Tribute in, like, it doesn't really matter that your opponent has set up anything because it's just gone. Like, you can, you can slowly whittle your opponent away to nothing. Um, even against an established board, you just gotta play properly, and you gotta play the proper ratios, and you gotta stop playing Floodgates pretending they actually do anything. Because they don't. The Floodgates are only good in a deck that can win without them. And if you're building your deck dependent on Floodgates, you are just going to lose. Um, which is why this deck doesn't play any except one in the side deck as just like a blowout because I don't play Imperial Order. So, yeah. That's one interaction. Let's go to another. All right, for the other, I've already explained this before. What you can do is if you have Imperm, Alice, Lair, you can turn off any Omni Negate you don't want to deal with, then banish it to Special Alice, run it into something, and then you search Lilith, activate Lair, normal Lilith, get rid of something. Um, I've already exp explained this before, but you can actually take it a little step further if... Um, depending on the situation, where instead of Alice, it's Arena. So you Imperm their most disrupted negate, activate Lair, normal Arena, tribute anything else that might be problematic, and then you search Alice. And a perfect example of anything disruptive is like, oh, let's say they summon uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. They tr um, want to like pop a Scythe or whatever to just Imperm it. And then afterwards, um, you can tribute that DP to search Alice. Then you can special summon Alice by banishing the Imperm. And then you will make arguably one of the best cards ever in the Ash deck. Dark, target their DPE, and then you special summon it to your field. And now you can start breaking apart their board because you still have three cards in your hand. But now you have a DP online and... You have a dark, which is a floater, so you can just accomplish a lot. And if you decide to leave the DPE up, during the end phase, you're going to get a lair token, which is just a free activation for DPE, because you can just destroy your token and whatever they try to reestablish with. So you can really, really establish a lot and very little. But I think I'll go over one more interaction before we're done. Now, this last interaction uh, involves Heavenly Prison, and it's actually really nice with rank threes because what you do, let's say you summon a rank three. So you're interacting with your opponent's board and now you're able to establish two level threes on board. Let's just say this. You can then make break sword, but 
This seems like a trade. Do you really want to just trade for something on board? Well, you actually just don't have to. Let me show you why. You will set any backer or layer of darkness. Then you'll activate Lord of the Heavenly Prism. And while his face up on the field, set cards on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, what you can do is you can activate Break Sword, target your set, and target their card. Assuming it isn't set. You destroy their card if it isn't set, and then Sky Prison prevents this from being destroyed. So, like, that's what's really nice with Break Sword is because it can target things that can be protected with Heavenly Prison, it's just a one-sided breakthrough, and then you can go Battle Phase, and then Main Phase 2, you can just go Zeus. Wherever it is, there we go. So this is another interaction, and Zeus is also really nice. Because if you decide... Here, let me show you. Because since Zeus is super, super chainable to, like, everything... Let's say... Um, we'll start with this one first. Let's say... Um, your back row is this. Um, and your opponent starts playing again, and you're actually concerned that they might re-establish a board. And let's say Lilith is in the graveyard... Um, once they try to re-establish, you activate Metaverse, you chain back to the front, target Lilith, then you chain Zeus, clear the entire board, and then at resolution, the lair is activated, and Lilith is pulled out of your graveyard. So, because all your traps are chainable, it actually makes Zeus <laughs> quite powerful, because you can just chain them prior to activating Zeus, and they'll just resolve normally. Um, this also works... If you just have Lilith, um, you can activate Lilith when they're trying to play and then chain Zeus, clear everything, and then set the trap you want for next turn, which is probably a back to the front to try to establish more. But yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and man, I am excited for this deck. This is so nice. Now, they're probably going to be at it soon because this is like all theoretical future stuff. But it, it's cool. But yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. And remember, Master Interflex will take your soul.